the Battle of Glen Mama or Glen Mama was a battle that took place, most probably near Lyons Hill in Ardclough, County Kildare in AD 999 between Windmill Hill and Black Church. It was the decisive and only engagement of the brief Leinster Revolt of 999-1000 against the King of Munster, Brian Boru. In it, the combined forces of the kingdoms of Munster and Meath, under King Brian Boru and the High King of Ireland, Male Seknal II, inflicted a crushing defeat on the Allied armies of Leinster and Dublin, led by King Male Morder of Leinster. The two armies met in a narrow valley, causing a rout of male Morda's army in at least three directions. They were pursued, and the main body of the army was slaughtered when they rallied at several fording points along the River Liffey. The main commanders were either killed or captured. The battle resulted in the occupation of Dublin by Brian's Munster forces and the submission of male Morder and King Sigtrig Siltbeard of Dublin to Brian Boru. The solution did not prove permanent, however, and eventually resulted in the Second Leinster Revolt against Brian and the Battle of Clontuff in 1014. Location Although 19th century scholars, including John O'Donovan and Todd, and especially the Dunlavin-based clergyman John Francis Shearman were tempted to locate the battle site in the vicinity of Dunlavin, Co. Wicklow. Within their lifetime the theory was disputed by Goddard Orpen, and were disproved by Joseph Lloyd in 1914 and subsequently by Albert MacGabrain who located the battle site beside Ard Clough on the Dublin Kildare border in 1914 between Windmill Hill and Black Church. Aylber MacShamrain wrote, Given the propensity for battles to take place in border regions, it seems reasonable to seek a location close to the perimeter of the Hiberno Norse Kingdom of Dublin. On that account, the suggestion of Lloyd, which places the battle at a gap now crossed by the Nace Road on the section between Kill and Rathcool, is still worthy of consideration. In any event, the engagement took place within an easy day's march of Dublin, as Brian pressed on immediately afterwards to reach the town on the following day. Background in 997, at a royal meeting near Clonfit, Brian Boru, King of Munster, met with his longtime rival male Seknal Macdomnail, who was at the time High King of Ireland. Although the idea of the High Kingship is considered mainly an anachronistic invention, it came into vogue in the 10th century to denote a king who had enforced his power over external territories. Male Seknal assumed the Irish High Kingship after the Battle of Tara in 980. The two kings made a truce, by which Brian was granted rule over the southern half of Ireland, while Male Seknal retained the northern half and High Kingship. In honour of this arrangement, Male Seknal handed over to Brian the hostages he had taken from Dublin and Leinster, and in 998, Brian handed over to Male Seknal the hostages of Connacht. In the same year, Brian and Male Seknal began cooperating against the Norse of Dublin for the first time. Late in 999, however, the Leinster men, historically hostile to domination by either the Irene Acutil over kings or the King of Munster, allied themselves with the Norse of Dublin and revolted against Brian. According to the 17th century annals of the Four Masters, the following prophecy had predicted the Battle of Glen Mama. They shall come to Glen Mama. It will not be water over hands. Persons shall drink a deadly draught around the stone at Clan Kong Hare. From the victorious overthrow they shall retreat, till they reach past the wood northwards, and Athcliath the fair shall be burned. After the ravaging the Leinster Plain, Battle. The annals of the Four Masters records that Brian and Male Seknal united their forces, and according to the annals of Ulster, they met the Leinster Dublin Army at Glen Marma on Thursday, 30 December 999. Glen Marma, near Lyons Hill in County Kildare, was the ancient stronghold of the kings of Leinster. The Munster Meath Army defeated the Leinster Dublin Army. Later historians have also seen the battle as decisive. The sources point to high mortality on both sides. 
According to the Annals of Innes Fallon, which represents a Munster perspective, Formnagel Herren fell therein. The more partisan Coggedgadel Regali indulges in hyperbole, claiming that, since the Battle of Magrath to that time there had not taken place a greater slaughter, the fallen included Harold's son of Amlabe, and other nobles of the foreigners amongst whom was one Kilen son of Eitige Akuten, who apparently belonged to the Galenga. He may have been a brother of Ruadek and son of Itgen, king of Ether Galeng, who died in 953. On Brian's side, even the Kogad acknowledges that there fell many multitudes of the Dalciais, but no details are provided. The it says the battle was bloody, furious, red, valiant, heroic, manly, rough, cruel and heartless, and that there had been no greater slaughter since the 7th century Battle of Marath. Ocarane refers to it as a crushing defeat of Leinster and Dublin, while the Dictionary of English History says the battle effectively quelled the desperate revolt of Leinster and Dublin. Tradition records that the son of the King of the Danes, Harold Olafsson, was killed in the retreat, and was interned at the now obscure cemetery of Crehelp. Brian took male Mordor of Leinster prisoner and held him until he received hostages from the Leinster men. It was alleged that 7,000 Norse fell in the battle. This was at a time when warfare was fought on a very limited scale, and raiding armies generally had between 100 and 200 men. Most importantly, the defeat left the road to Dublin, free and unimpeded for the victorious legions of Brian and Mail Seclen. Sack of Dublin. The victory was followed up with an attack on the city of Dublin. Brian's forces marched quickly to Dublin reaching the town on New Year's Eve 999. They entered its defences without any great resistance and the annals of Innes Fallon say that, on New Year's Day 1000, they burned both the settlement itself and the nearby wood known as Kaitame which apparently stood on the north side of the Liffey. The plunder of the town, for the second time in ten years, is described in considerable detail in the co-guide. The 12th century Cogad Gedhill Re Gallov gives two accounts of the occupation. That Brian remained in Dublin from Christmas Day until Epiphany, or from Christmas Day until Street, Brigid's Day. The later Annals of Ulster gives a date of 30 December for the Battle of Glenmama, while Annals of Innis Fallen dates Brian's capture of the city two days later, to 1 January 1000. According to the much more reliable Annals of the Four Masters and the Chronicon Scotorum, Dublin was only occupied for a week by Munster forces. In any case, in 1000, Brian plundered the city, burned the Norse fortress and expelled its ruler, King Sigtrig Siltbeard. Aylber Mac Shamrain wrote, Allowance must be made here for poetic license but, event itself. Some picture can be obtained of the wealth of the trading centre that was Dublin according to the account Brian, having plundered the Dun, entered the Margaret and here seized the greatest wealth. Meanwhile, on the approach of the Munster forces, King Sitrik had fled northward hoping to obtain asylum among the Ulster men. His ally, male Mordor of Uifi Ellen, was captured, in ignominious circumstances according to Cogad Gable Re Galabe. Aftermath, the kingship of Leinster was bestowed upon the Ui Dunchader candidate, Dunchade son of Domnail, who retained this status until he was deposed in 1003. Sigtrig Siltbeard returned having found no asylum in the north. The annal accounts concur that he, too, yielded hostages to Brian while the annals of Innes Fallon add that Brian in a suitable magnanimous gesture, gave the fort to the foreigners. Aylber Mac Shamrain wrote, The implications here is that, from this time onwards, the Hibernus Scandinavian ruler would hold his kingship from his Munster overlord. There seems to be little doubt that the longer-term beneficiary of Glen Mama was Brian alone. With renewed confidence, he again moved against Male Seknal, Male Seknal Macdomnail. Even if his initiatives of 1000 to 1001 resulted in setbacks, 
One expedition into Braga resulted in his advance cavalry being slaughtered by the Uene Acutil, another foray was reversed in Mide, and the Dalciai's river fleet was impeded by the King of Tara and his Conachter allies having constructed a barrier across the Shannon. Brian, however, found a way of circumventing Hittim. Early in 1002, brought a large army through to Athlone and took the hostages of Connacht. According to the Cogged Gedhill Regala of Sigtrik's flight from the city brought him north, first to the Ulaid and then to Aed of Cene Acutel Neogain. Since Sigtrig could find no refuge in Ireland, he eventually returned, submitted to Brian, gave hostages and was restored to Dublin. This was three months after Brian ended his occupation in February. In the meantime, Sigtrig may have temporarily turned pirate and been responsible for a raid on St. David's in Wales. Brian gave his own daughter by his first wife in marriage to Sigtrig. Brian in turn took as his second wife Sigtrig's mother, the now thrice-married Gormflaith. The cessation of revolt was followed by over a decade of peace in Dublin while Sigtrig's men served in the armies of Brian. However, Sigtrig never forgot the insult of the Arlaid, and in 1002 he had his revenge when his soldiers served in Brian's campaign against the Arlaid and ravaged their lands. Mael Seknal found the support of the northern kings slipping away felt obliged to submit and a new political order was created. The capitulation of the King of Tara left Brian as the most powerful king in Ireland, the first non-Uyeni Acutil king to achieve such prominence. Aylber Mac Shamrain wrote, Glenmamar gave Brian a psychological advantage over the King of Tara and increased his readiness to break the agreement of Clonfort. As a result of the battle, he had achieved domination, in a meaningful sense, of Leinster and Dublin. Through achieving effective dominance of Dublin, Brian acquired a military advantage over Mael Seknal, which helped him in his endeavours to reach beyond the lordship of Lethmoga. His success in this regard was probably instrumental in tying Dublin into the sphere of Lethmoga for at least a century to follow. Bibliography Lay Law, Brian, ed. The Encyclopedia of Ireland. Gillan Macmillan. ISBN 0-7171-3000-2. Downham, Clare. Viking Kings of Britain in Ireland. The Dynasty of Avar to A.D. 1014. Don Eden Academic Press. ISBN 9781903765890. Hudson, Benjamin T. Viking Pirates and Christian Princes. Dynasty, Religion, and Empire in the North Atlantic. United States. Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780195162370. Low, Sydney, Pulling, Frederick Sanders. The Dictionary of English History. Castle, McManus, C. M. Ars. The Story of the Irish Race. A Popular History of Ireland. Ireland. The Irish Publishing Co. ISBN 0-517-06408-1. O'Carane, Don Chard. Ireland Before the Normans. Ireland. Gillan Macmillan. Tot, James Henthorne. Cogged Gedhill Regala of The War of the Gedhill with the Gale, or The Invasions of Ireland by the Danes and Other Norsemen, Longmans, Green, Reader, and Dyer, Aylber McShame Rain, The Battle of Glen Mamar, Dublin, in Sean Duffy, Medieval Dublin 2, ISBN 1 85182 607 6.